air fried steak and potatoes. And, and not just any potatoes, but smashed potatoes. And when you see, not mashed, but smashed. And when you see what I mean by that, and you see how well the Ninja Foodie does it, I think it'll become one of your go-to recipes. If you've watched my videos before on steak, it, it, it's one of the, my favorite ways to cook a steak, especially in the house. It, air frying a steak works really, really well, and uh, it does the same thing with potatoes. So we're about to do all of this right here in this one pot. We're going to cook those potatoes a little bit first, and then we're going to put a steak on top of them and cook that also after we smash them a little bit. There I am. Y'all know me. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's air fry a steak and smash some potatoes. Okay, I do want to touch on a few variations because a lot of people may not have this. It doesn't matter. Do it without it. Salt and pepper and butter. Uh, salt, pepper, butter, and water is really all you need. You don't even need this. I, I like to use this. I mean, I have it. So I'm going to grate a little bit of that over the potatoes once they're done. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Even the beef broth. Now, I do think if you have beef broth, I think it gives a really good flavor to these potatoes. You'll see where I'm using that in just a minute. But as far as, and the garlic even, I mean, if you got it, use it. And if you like garlic, use it. If you don't, by all means, don't. But what we're going to do, I'm going to pressure cook those potatoes a little bit, and I'll bring you back in just a second to show you exactly what I'm doing. Then we're going to pick one of these out, and we're going to put that steak over those potatoes once they're smashed a little bit, and then we're going to do some air frying a steak on the top of those potatoes. You know, hold up, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I wanted to bring you back right here and show you where we're at. And that is the larger potatoes out of that bag are in there. Uh, here's the smaller ones. We'll save those for something else. Me and Baby Doll are sharing this steak tonight. This is a recipe for two. That's why I have so many in there. I'm about to shake some of this in there. Thyme and parsley. Again, not needed. Some salt and pepper I'm going to put in. And I mean like... It's just to your liking. That's it. And then a, a, a half a stick, I'm going to slice into slices, put in here, and then I'm going to cover them with this beef broth. We're going to put the lid on and do a little pressure cooking. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is what my potato setup looks like. <laughs> and uh, I used the entire 32 ounces of the beef broth. I mean, I don't usually save it once I open it anyhow. I got the thyme and the parsley on. Uh, half a stick of butter, the two cloves of garlic. What we're going to do right now is put the lid on. Whoops, like did that backwards. And we're going to set this thing up. I got to get it. I got to get a few things ready, but I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got everything plugged in and all now. And what we're going to do is I want to cook them for two minutes, and then we're going to check them with the thermopan. They should be around 200 degrees to be where I want them. So we're going to cook them for two minutes, check the temp, and then pour everything in, pour all the liquids out and smash them a little bit, get the steak on top and start that part. So we're on pressure, we're on high, I got to hit time, and we're going to do, whoops, went the wrong way, we're going to do two minutes, I got to make sure I'm sealed, I am, going to hit start, we're off and running, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, we are at the time, and we're going to release this pressure. As soon as that's done, we're going to drain those potatoes. Okay, there went the pin. So we have arrived. I'm going to pull the lid off. We're going to take a look at them. And we're going to take some temps right quick just to make sure we're somewhere in the neighborhood of what we want. And here's kind of what it looks like. So let's get a rating on one of those potatoes. There's a big one. We'll see what it does. And it feels good. 190, 191, that is absolutely perfect. And you can see if I can hold this hot potato. <laughs> In fact, we'll put it right here and see if you can still see what I'm doing. When I go about in the center of the potato, 199, I mean, that's perfect. So I mean, my point is, is a lot of people cook them further than that. It, they just don't need it. I mean, well, let me say that. This size potato doesn't. 
I'm going to do it better than that. All right, right there. This size potato doesn't need five minutes. It needs two. So 193 uh, all the way. And that's all, let's go all the way through it, just, just so you'll know. And that's out the other side. That's coming through. And I know I go too far with this a lot of times, but it's important. A lot of people, if you ask me, overcook things in a pressure cooker. They don't, they don't trust them to do something in, say, two minutes, like these potatoes. Those potatoes are perfect at two minutes. So all I'm going to do is pull this out of here and drain them right here. And we're going to take these out. I'm going to pour that water out and let these breathe just a minute. That's all we're going to do. Let them sit and breathe and kind of dry off a little bit because we want them to... I just don't want all that liquid on them. But you can see it's got a pretty good coating. You could put more uh, seasoning on it if you wanted to. But anyhow, I got to do that, and I'll have to, in fact, I'll turn the camera off. I'll be back in a minute when I get that done. All right, just so you'll know, I put, uh, all I did was pour the water out of there. I mean, it just I just poured that out. That's, that's all I did. And I'm going to throw a little more salt on them right now, just because I got no good reason, and you don't even have to. I'm not, I love salt. So I'm going to let them breathe, like I said, just a minute right here. I'm going to dump them back in there. We're going to take a glass or something, whatever I can find, and we're going to smash them just a little bit. So hold up, and I'll be back. Okay, so kind of because I like to show everything, I just took a paper towel, and I wiped out the inside of that, and you don't have to, but I'm adding like four more pats of butter. I'm going to let that melt. And uh, I might even end up with that whole half stick in there. As a matter of fact, I can tell I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> there goes the rest of the stick. And and again, you don't have to. You know, it's, it's probably not healthy, but uh, I ain't going to say I'm not. I don't try and be healthy, but not on this case, evidently. So... What I'm going to do, when that melts, I'm going to move those potatoes in there, and I'm going to roll them around in that butter. And I've already got some salt on them, as you saw. And then we're going to take, I'm going to take a glass. I found one somewhere, if I can figure out what I did with it. But I've got a glass sitting here that I'm going to use, a drinking glass, that I'm going to use to just kind of smash those down and flatten them out a little bit. And you'll see what I mean? Hold up. Okay, so I found the one I'm using. It's just a thick bottom glass. I... It, these are hot, so you don't want to use something you think might shatter. And uh, I, I don't think that will. We're about to find out. It's still on keep warm, and that's why that butter's melting. So I'm dropping these potatoes back in there. And uh, all I'm going to do is move them around with a spoon and get them coated with that butter, and then we're going to crush them just a little bit. And I know it's getting lengthy, but hold up. All right, there's what I'm doing, and that is it. <laughs> And now I'm going to let them sit just a minute with that butter. And in that heat, I might even, you know, sprinkle more salt. I'm not against it, but I'm going to crush them first. But right now, I just want them to sit in that butter. That's what I do, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this steak ready. Be back. Okay, so here's all you do. And all I'm going to do is this right here. I'll pull that one like this right here, and I'm going to show you all of them. But I just break it. And that's it right there. You just break it. It's mine. My particular ones are sitting in butter and some salt. And you, you will have to fish them around a little bit, but it's not a crisis. You just do that right there. And if they don't look, I mean, they're not all going to be beautiful. You're not trying to make them real pretty. You're just trying to crush them down so they can absorb some of these flavors. And I said I wasn't going to do it on camera, but that's how easy it is. You just... Crush them. And we're not making mashed potatoes. So right there is all mine's getting. So you can, well, you can see it pretty good from right there. Now, this this steak, I'm going to sit right here, and I got to make room, and it might mess up some of my potatoes. But you know something? It's not a big deal. Now, I'm going to do all I ever, almost ever do to a steak, and that is salt and pepper. And we're going to do that side. This is one of the reasons I didn't re-salt those before I put this in. I'm going to put that there, that there. And the only thing I probably would do, if I did anything different, it would be spray it a little bit with some avocado oil. 
but I don't think that's needed. If I think it is, I'm gonna add it in a minute, but I just don't think it needs it. So what we do now, lower this lid. I'm gonna move that to, uh, uh, it thinks we're in pressure cook, so I'm gonna turn it all the way off. I'm gonna back this up where you can see what I'm doing. I turned it all the way off, I'm turning it back on, and I'm going to air broil, and, and that's 450 degrees. We're gonna hit start. Now, all we're gonna do, let that run. I'm gonna take my thermopin, and we're gonna see how that's looking in a few minutes, so. It's set for 10 minutes, and as a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna add time to that because I don't want it turning off. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say 15 minutes. I, I got a feeling it won't take that long because I eat my steaks a little medium rare. I kinda like mine where a good veterinarian can get them back on their feet in about 30 minutes. That's how I eat mine. But I'm gonna explain how to fix that too if you got someone at your house that wants one more done than that. I'll be back and I'll show you that. Okay, you can see we're coming up on the, the five minutes left, which is 10 minutes of air broil. Let's take a look. And you tell me, that all looks excellent. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and flip this steak. And uh, we may add a little time. I'm not even going to look at temps yet. I think it's fine. So, Gonna let it run out those five minutes or so. We'll take a look again in just a second. Okay, we're coming up on the full 15 minutes. Now that was an inch, at least an inch thick steak or so. In fact, we're gonna take some temp reads, but you can see there's nothing wrong with the way any of that looks. Those potatoes are, uh, they look excellent. Let's see what we got for a temp. And I can tell we are getting close. It feels it feels really close. There's 119. I'm gonna take it to like 120, uh, 128. And there's 116. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set that back down. Let's see if I need to flip it. I don't think so. But to keep me from messing up, I am. I like the way that side looks. So I'm gonna leave it on that side. Now you can see that's not a thin, that's not a small steak. <laughs> so I'm going back to air broil. It's already set at 10 minutes. I'm gonna hit start and we're just gonna watch temps right now. So be back. Okay, we're right at three more minutes and I'm gonna be shocked if that's not enough. And let's just get an idea. 129, 128, 130, we are there. And trust me, uh, I've eaten them. That's that's the temp I kind of like. So what we're gonna do is pull this out. I'm gonna turn it to that side. And we're gonna let that, one, let that rest while I get those potatoes out. And I'll let you see them. They are gonna be excellent, I guarantee it. Now you know, I'll be back. Okay, right there it is, fresh out of the Ninja. And that is how I would serve it. Now I'm gonna slice it up to where I can make some thumbnail pictures and all that stuff. But you see what that looks like. And take my word, I just tasted this potato. I can eat the potatoes by itself. I don't have to say that. Though That is absolutely the best, most impressive meal you will cook at your house you did it in your Ninja, anybody's gonna love it. And in about five minutes, I'm gonna slice this up, I'm gonna make pictures, then we're gonna look at it again. So y'all hold up and I'll be back. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I didn't cut it because I wanna cut it on screen or <laughs> for you to see. I'm gonna tell you, I have tasted these potatoes. You will not forget how good those potatoes taste. Not only do they have the beef broth that we cooked in them, they have this steak flavor. And I was also gonna say how you would fix it if say, <laughs> like I said, we're, I, I like mine kinda raw. Uh, if, if you wanted to just do this some more, all you would do, like with me and baby doll splitting this, and she's eating hers tomorrow, so this is gonna be real simple. But anyhow, if you were doing it right now, you would cut it in half, set that part back in. That's all there is to it. Leave half the potatoes in. And then they stay warm, and all, all of it works. It's not, it's not complicated. 
I'm going to see if I can show you all just exactly what an excellently cooked steak in an air fryer looks like. And I may have the camera a little bit wrong, but we're going to do it anyhow. So hold on. I'll move the camera if I need to. I just want you all to see it. And uh, this is what a perfectly cooked steak, if you ask me, looks like. And I'm trying to make it look all pretty and like it lay, and it don't want to act right. But I'm going to for pictures. And like I said, baby doll's expecting half of this to be together tomorrow, so I need to cut, quit cutting. But right there's what I'm eating tonight, and I'll cook her another tomorrow. I got three, or I got two more, so. But anyhow, there you go. That is it. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know what else to expect. <laughs> I don't know how you would beat it. That's my point. That potato, it, it, it's a crispy skin. The, the skin's crispy. It has the flavor of that steak. Uh, and you can see the steak. I don't, you know, it. I can take a bite of it. I assure you, I don't need to. It's falling apart as I try and cut it. I mean, I don't know how you're going to beat it. A grill, uh, anything. An air fryer works excellent on steak. I, I'm not going to get into my theory on air fryers, but I think it works really great for this. The steak is excellent. So are these potatoes. I promise you, <laughs> find a napkin, but if you try what I just did, I don't know if you can hear that crunching. That crunching is those potato skins. They're great. I'm just going to hush at that. I'm going to raise this back up and try and tell you all bye because I'm fixing to eat that, and uh, anyhow, you see, it's great, take my word, I'm going to get in this video if I can, hey, I love y'all all, come back to see me cook you a steak and your ninja foodie with some smashed potatoes, and see if I'm wrong, and if I am, you call me out, love y'all all, y'all come back to see me, bye-bye.